Hey everyone, welcome to the journey to Steam, episode 2. Last week I was sick, that's why there was no video. This week we're going to be catching up on everything, so let's have a look at all of the new mechanics. I decided to rewrite the AI, so I created my own AI system. I was previously using something called the AI perception system, combined with the behavior trees. I'm still using behavior trees, I'm just using my own line of sight and sound systems. The only reason I decided to do this is because I want a maximum flexibility. Because I didn't create the AI perception system, I can't access everything as all of the properties are not exposed for blueprints. With the system that I'm using, it's a simple line of sight, it casts a cone, and it checks, is the player in the radius? Can I see the player? Is there an object between me and the player? If I can't see the player, let's just patrol. It goes between four points. It has an array of locations. I can set this array to anything I want, and it's really flexible. It goes through, and it just loops. If I do see the enemy, it's going to go into engaging with the player. And there's something really cool, which is the parallel uh, task. So it can run two tasks at the same time. It's called simple parallel, and it's part of the behavior tree. You can attack and run at the player at the same time. With this system, I also have something called Acceptable Radius. This is the radius in which it will stop before it runs directly into the enemy. So I can make the enemy, say, stand a meter away from the player and shoot it. I could also do something really cool like, when you get a meter away from the player, find cover and engage and shoot. If the enemy manages to lose track of the player, it will then look for locations that it can run to to search for the player. The way this is set up is that I have a collider around the enemy, and I have these scene objects with colliders around the level. These are on a very specific um, object channel, and they can only be detected by the enemy. The enemy looks for these locations, and it will select a random one within its radius. This will become its search location. Once it goes to the search location, it will choose one more search location, and then it will give up and go back to patrolling. That is how the AI system works, and I'm really happy with it. To test the AI and a few of the functions that I've implemented, I decided to create a kind of demo level. The importance of the demo level is just to make sure all the mechanics work and are fun to use in a small tested environment. So as you can see in this block out, I've got side areas and I've got the main area that I can run through. And in this final block out, you can see that I've just added a few more details. A lot of these assets I created in Blender myself, and I just put some simple substance materials on. A few of them, such as the crates, uh, actually just the crates, they are from the asset store, and they were really great, it totally fitted the style, they were extremely cheap, I got them on sale, I had them in the library, and I just put them in to fill the environment a little, and to give you something to hide behind during the playtest. The fan was one of the assets that I enjoyed implementing the most. I'm not using the inbuilt fog and volumetric light settings because it really kills your frame rate and it gives you weird lighting artifacts in VR. I'm just using this simple old school method of using a mesh and a material to show that kind of volumetric light effect. I then, when you walk into it, give it a slight fade and it's two-sided. Plus you've got the nice shadows casting down from the spotlight, which gives it um, more of an illusion of being you know, this real kind of volumetric light, and of course, the particles. So we've got the pickup system, and now you can pick up objects from a distance, and they get a nice white outline. You'll see that we have the side area, which I showed you in the block out, and we can access these knives. With the knife, we can use them in a melee, and we can throw them. And of course you can throw your knife and it will stick in the enemy. It's not 100% perfect, I got it to just good enough so I could show it off. We have two enemies, one is idle, so they can only patrol to one spot, and that enemy is patrolling between two locations. 
What I'm going to do now is like a drop assassination, so you jump down, take him out, put the knife in my main throwing hand, and take out this enemy. In the first Journey to Steam episode, we implemented the guns, and what I wanted to do was try a different type of weapon to see if it would suit the stealth action gameplay. This was the bow and arrow. I've always liked the idea of a sci-fi bow and arrow that you could use in a VR game. So what I ended up doing was creating a very basic model in Blender, exporting that, putting it into Substance, giving it a few nice textures and materials, throwing that into Unreal Engine 4, and beginning to implement the bow and arrow. It worked really well in the end. I followed two resources, which really helped me. I'll leave those in the description below. And when I was developing the bow, I ran into a few really difficult problems. Arrows were spawning in the wrong way, which had to do with quaternions and the way I was rotating certain um, objects. And one other major problem was that I spent too many hours in a row trying to solve a problem. And what I found out is that usually my code or my blueprints will reflect my state of mind. If I feel impatient and I feel like, and I've been working for way too many hours, my code will get messy, or in this case, my blueprints will look like a tangled mess. What I ended up doing was just taking, you know, an hour break, coming back. I fixed up everything, made it really clean, and I figured out the problem. My my arrow had a collision on it when it was being spawned. And that means the physics were making it offset when you released the arrow because it was colliding with the bow. It was really easy to fix this. And I figured that out by just turning off the collision on the bow, on the arrow, sorry. And that should have been the first thing that I did. It's like basic debugging. Try all the very basic stuff and then dive into the complex stuff. I was trying to fix all the quaternions and all the vectors and trying to get into the models themselves and check if the rotations were correct or incorrect. And it was just so simple, turn off the collisions. So if you need to take a break and try to keep your code really clean, comment things, you'll be able to solve problems way easier and implement your mechanics properly. To test out the bow properly, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to make a map specifically for the bow and arrow. I really like creating custom demo maps for specific mechanics. It allows you to really easily debug and solve problems because you're working with an isolated mechanic. And you can also test that mechanic properly in an environment that really suits it. All I had to do was duplicate the map that I had before for the initial prototype where I was testing out the mechanics of the knife and the enemy AI. I expanded upon it and I ended up changing the lighting a bit, adding a few more boxes in, a few more objects, and throwing in some drones. I got the drones on the asset store, they were really cheap and they looked really cool. I just wanted something a bit more exciting for the video apart from the mannequin. So yeah, we've got drones to shoot down, the bow mechanics work really nicely, and we have a test environment. So let's see how all the mechanics work for the bow and arrow within this test environment. Here we have the test environment for the bow and arrow. It turned out really nice, I like the lighting and how it all looks, especially just for a quick test environment. We've got the drones currently set to idle, and here's the bow, it dissolves in, comes from your hand, and you can shoot the arrows. The longer you pull the arrows, the further they go, and the more power they have. Arrows can bounce the surfaces, which is really cool. You can think of a lot of really great applications for this, especially being able to distract enemies with it bouncing off the wall, making a noise, hitting another enemy, or even bouncing it behind a pillar when you can not see an enemy currently. Next up, we have the attack drones. So you hit that button, you destroy the drones, and then they will begin to attack. I forgot to mention, as you saw there, you can stop your bow from shooting if you put the arrow close to the grip and let go. So the drones will be shooting these red emissive cubes at the player, and you have to dodge moving your head. Your whole body, of course, attracts your whole body, but the collision it's checking for is your head. The reason why the head is so important in VR, it's because it's the part that everyone will move. If you play Superhot VR and you watch anyone play Superhot VR, 
Everyone will just move their head out the way. It's just an instinct that we all have. And it feels really unfair when you feel like you've moved in VR because you moved your head out the way and then your body gets hit. So it's really important to consider the head tracking. And I learned that a lot through playing Robo Recall. So this was quite fun to put together. I just gave them the ability to shoot at you and I spawned them in a random origin inside this cube, inside of a box. So that was quite easy to put together. And it's kind of like a little VR arcade game. Um, obviously this is just to prototyping. It's not going to be released. It's just for me. I hope you all enjoyed this Journey to Steam episode. I put quite a bit of effort into the audio editing, making the quality really nice, setting up the microphone properly, and also just the editing in general of the video and the sound. I started using a website, I'll just have a look at it now, Epidemic Sound. Um, I've been watching this guy called Peter McKinnon, and he has an amazing channel on editing videos, and I'm just trying to absorb all of his knowledge. And I've struggled finding music on YouTube for so long, and he had this great video about music on YouTube. So I'm trying out the free trial for Epidemic Sound. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm excited for the next one. I will try my best to get one out again this week. No promises, but I would love to get another one out soon. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think of the mechanics that I'm making and what you think of everything. And also, I do want to get a Q&A out. I mentioned it in the previous video, so leave any more questions and I will hopefully get a Q&A video out soon. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.